Welcome everyone, this is the last lecture of our course stochastic control and communication and we have come to a very interesting juncture where we were talking of data compression problems and we were wondering if it is in fact even feasible to do something like data compression. Data compression involved uh, taking a source that can pay, take pos two raised to n possible values and storing it in a, uh, in, in a, in a storage whose which could which had space for only two raised to k possible strings. So, uh, so, so the, 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 the problem for us was can the are these two raised to k st actually is the, are these two raised to k in fact sufficient or uh, or or is is it in fact not not even possible to uh, to uh, to recover the source meaningfully with those two, uh, with just two raised to k with with just a set of size two raised to k now for that what we what we decided that we were we were looking for a set we were wondering if there exists a subset of the strings that we want to store that is to uh, a subset called a, a n epsilon whose probability was high so that when we recover uh, this this subset is is our target that is what we want to recover and so the probability of this set has to be high but then the size of this set has to be as a fraction of the total number of strings has to be small and now what we did was we looked at what is called the asymptotic equipartition property here which was in which we looked at uh, what is called a typical set is a set of sequences have whose probability distribution satisfies uh, uh, a certain uh, a certain set of inequalities and the, with this we said were the strings that you would typically see the num the strings with the number of zeros and ones that you would typically see um, in uh, a, a when, so when the strings are being generated in an iid fashion and what we found was that this this set satisfies a certain set of properties the first property is that its probability is large. So, as n tends to infinity this this probability is uh, the, the you have that p, n, p of n epsilon is uh, for n sufficiently large finite but large you have this property that p of n epsilon is a n epsilon is greater than 1 minus epsilon. But we also have the property that a n epsilon is actually its cardinality is upper bounded by 2 raised to n times a constant. We have yet to see what this constant is, but this uh, it is upper bounded by this particular constant. And we also had this additional property that it is there is a lower bound also on the size. So, now question is first uh, we, the question that we had was well how do we make use of this? The way to make use of this uh, is, is, uh, is, is to do the following. So, what we, what we do is we, we we wanted to we wanted to recover these two raised to n. We had a two raised to n possible strings that were in our source. What we would do is we use the function f to map to assign them a a label. The set of labels are from one to dot 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 till two raised to n times h of p. These are our labels. So, we assign each of these strings a label which is from uh, and the set of labels is from 1 to 2 raised to n times h of p. So, the number of labels therefore, the number of labels is therefore is 2 is 2 raised to n h of p. Now, this then these labels are then used to recover, recover back the string that was sent. So, this is what is being used to decode. Now, in fact technically what we can do is because every every each of these 2 raised to n strings has to be mapped to a label technically what one can do is actually pad this ok. So, what uh, pad this label with another bit. So, what we do is take f to be a function that maps 0 1 to the n to this set of labels. times 0 comma 1 this is this is your set of valid labels and now the strings that you intend to recover you 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 pad it with a label 1 ok. So, if x 1 to x n belongs to a n epsilon 
pad it with a lab with with a one and then attach and then we attach the label if x1 to xn is not in this is not in an epsilon then pad it with 0 with a 0 and uh, once it is padded with a 0 we do not care what it is uh, what follows it you just started with a 0. This is what the function f does. So, this here defines for me the function f. What g would do is seize the first seize the first uh, first symbol if it is a 0 if it is a 0 discard or declare an error uh, let us say declare error it just says that I do not know what this amounts to it just declare an error and if, if it is a 1 proceed to read the label. And then from the label recover the label reconstruct reconstruct your x1 to xn reconstruct what uh, the string that was being sent right so so then what is the prob in this situation what is the probability that you uh, that you uh, the probability of making an error the probability that you make an error making an error here is the probability then that uh, of x1 to xn is not equal to x1 hat to xn hat. Now, this 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 probability you would make an error only when uh, the string is actually not in form a and epsilon. So, this prob the uh, you would you would make no error when the string is from a and epsilon you would make an error only when the string is actually not from a and epsilon. So, the probability of making an error is actually at most is 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 at most the probability is uh, greater than is less than or equal to the probability that the string here is not in the set a and epsilon and this particular probability remember is less than epsilon. So, in other words that we have that as n uh, for n sufficiently large the probability of error is less than epsilon this is essentially the scheme. So, what this is uh, what this has shown is that it is possible for us to work with approximately 2 raised uh, 2 raised to n h of epsilon many strings and recover the source perfectly. So, the 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 the, the, uh, the resource that I was saying we were saying that the ch I was saying that the channel has a has a resource constraint that it can accommodate only 2 raised to k possible uh, possible uh, possible spaces. Well, if that k is greater than n times h of epsilon right then it is still it is possible to take the source and uh, to take to assign to take the source assign it uh, labels ranging from 1 to 2 raised to n h of p and then recover from the from those labels the source with high probability. So, what this is saying is if k is is greater than equal to n times n n times h of epsilon we can recover the source. So, what I, I, we can interpret this result as a compression result this is effectively saying that a string uh, a strings of of length n generated iid with the problem generated iid with the distribution p comma 1 minus p 
strings that binary strings of let us say binary strings of length n generated iid with a distribution p comma 1 minus p can be compressed to length n times h of p so in other words the average length so the uh, so a string of length n has been compressed to a, a string of length n times h of p that's what this is effectively saying with vanishing probability of error with vanishing probability of error So, now uh, why is this why am I calling this compression well we are calling this compression because actually this the prop the h of p function actually looks something like this. So, this is suppose 0 and this is 1 the h of p function it attains its maximum at, at, at p equal to half here it is actually symmetric around the line around p equal to half. So, this is this is p here this is h of p. So, uh, it is symmetric around uh, around, um, around, uh, around the line p equal to half at p equal to half actually it takes value 1 and everywhere else it is its value is strictly less than 1. So, n times h of p is, is in fact strictly is strictly less than n. So, which means that what we have achieved is therefore compression we have taken strings of length n and compressed them down to strings of length n times h of p and yet been, we have been able to recover uh, ensure that the probability of error is, is small. So, now which means to complete this all one needs to do is take a sequence of epsilons and then take a sequence of uh, sequence of codes such that the probability of error then goes goes down to 0. So, that uh, this 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 ha, this particular uh, this this theorem is of course a champion theorem because it tells us that this this extremely um, improbable sort of any, uh, thing is actually possible. It is possible to come up uh, to find a subset of strings whose probability is large, but whose cardinality is, uh, is small. And that is why we are able to recover the source with high probability, but uh, uh, while using a very small fraction of strings, because the cardinality of the strings involved is very, very small. Now, this is this is only telling you the possibility direction it does not tell you that you cannot be it just tells you you can compress them down to lengths n times h of p, but it does not tell you that you cannot do go lower. So, that is uh, 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 there is a separate theorem which tells you that you cannot go lower that is what is called the converse theorem of this it that basically tells you the converse theorem essentially says that uh, converse theorem basically says that if n is equal to some theta uh, sorry if k is equal to some theta times n and theta is strictly less than h of p then the probability of error is probability of error goes to 1. What this means is that if you you can compress your strings down to length h of p but if you try to even compress if you try to compress them even for a little bit further if you are looking for uh, even 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 a slight bit more compression than n times h of p then you will make uh, pro the probability of error is 1. That means no matter what scheme you use no matter what kind of subset you look for you would always have prob the probability of error going to 1. Okay. So, which means there is no scheme that will give you compression below length h of p. So, this is effectively what this has done is, is basically in, if you rec recall we were here as a decision problem I had, I had said that the goal here was to minimize this particular probability of error. What this has done is actually answered the following question that it has told us that as of uh, as k varies you have this uh, how this probability of error behaves uh, as n goes to infinity. So, if k is e is greater than or equal to h of p. So, this the behavior here is as follows if k is greater than or equal to h of p we find here that h of p is this sort of is this hard threshold 
if k is greater than or equal to h of p, so this is the value of k uh, or rather let me this is let me write this as theta, theta k is theta times n. So, if So, what we found is that there is this hard, there is this hard threshold. So, here on the on the x axis I am going to plot theta I am going to plot theta. So, the the value here of so this is this is say theta equal to 1 this is say theta equal to 0 somewhere in between is h of p and so k remember is theta times n. And what what this this uh, this theorem has to, uh, told us is that as as this uh, is that we can study this uh, you know as a as a function of this parameter theta so if k is if your theta uh, is is strictly less than p then this probability of error then the probability of error is is 1 Whereas, if k is, is uh, greater than uh, if theta is greater than h of p then the probability of error is 0. So, this is the sort of uh, uh, shape that the probability of error takes asymptotically. So, as n goes to infinity if your theta is even slightly below this threshold then, uh, then, then the probability of error shoots to 1. If you are greater than uh, if, you are, if, you are th uh, if your theta is greater than that threshold then the probability of error is, is equal to 0. Which means this this entropy here is something some something serious, something say, very very significant. It marks the it marks a phase change between uh, when you can compress uh, a source uh, up to which you can compress a source and beyond which you cannot. You can compress it down to h of p, as close to h of p as you can, but not not but not lower. That is what we uh, that is what this result says. So, the here so what we have done is basically we have looked at uh, let so let us now take a step back and try to think of where we are. You know, we, we, we said we, we, we looked at communication problems because we were interested in the communication aspect of, uh, of the Wittsenhausen problem. Wittsenhausen problem had in it implicitly a communication angle and that was because there was uh, there was in it a, uh, a the, the, the dual effect hiding because the, the first controller's actions affected the information of the second controller therefore, he was implicitly communicating something to the second controller. Thanks to that we said we will let us look at the ex two extreme cases. The first extreme case is what we had seen in the first part of the course where we studied MDPs and POMDPs. The second extreme case was the case of communication. And what I showed you was that communication problems can be thought of as basically decision problems and uh, where one is trying to minimize a, a certain error co a, a cost function uh, of some kind of which was some sort of probability of error or probability of distortion uh, or, or the expected distortion and, and over the choice of controllers what we call controllers, but these are in, uh, in this language are called encoders and decoders. Now, the, 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 the reason the this although this is an extreme uh, one extreme of the control setting which is one extreme of the Wittsenhausen setting there is a way there is a sense in which this is not exactly uh, exactly compatible with the setting we had in, in the Wittsenhausen problem. In the Wittsenhausen problem there was the setting we had was that there was a single there was a source and that source was a scalar source it was in fact a Gaussian random variable. A, a scalar Gaussian random variable that was being mapped by a function gamma 1 which then uh, is, uh, whose action then affected the information of the second controller then second controller there was noise in the ch in the medium so that was also a ga scalar Gaussian the second controller also took an action which was a scalar. So, thanks to this what we had this particular setting here had the source which was scalar actions which were scalar uh, information which was scalar and information which was scalar. Now, although the communication setting is in spirit an extreme setting of, of this particular problem of, of any kind or in fact of any non-classical uh, information structure problem, 
the communication setting is not really this setting. I mean the problem that has been studied and has been solved in communication is not really pertaining to this setting because the problem that has been solved involves not a scalar but a, but a, a, an entire block of symbols, not one symbol but a block of symbols. So remember the communication setting as I said was involved this, we it looked at the, the encoders and decoders did not just look at one symbol from the source and then and mapped it then to, a, uh, to, uh, to something later, but rather, but rather looked at an entire block and that entire block was being mapped en masse to a block of uh, symbols that would block of channel inputs that, that, that block of channel inputs went through the channel produced a block of channel outputs which was then mapped back to a block of possible, uh, possible reconstructions or recovered symbols. This, this block coding is essential uh, in the within the information theory paradigm because that is where uh, because that is where properties that asymptotic properties of the source kick in. Notice that the way we solved this compression problem was by using the asympt asymptotic equipartition property and the asymptotic equipartition property is one which, which uh, kicks in when your n becomes large. It tells you that when as, as you take la large enough strings or in other words long enough samples of the source, what is the typical number of zeros and ones and so on. If you have a small number of samples or in, in fact any small finite number of samples, you would not be able to say uh, anything, anything meaningful about you know what is the exact number of zeros and the exact number of ones. Fundamentally the problem at, finite, at a finite block length is essentially a kind of combinatorial problem because when we have when because because as you as i mentioned knowing the exact combination that gives you the smallest probability is not that easy so the the spirit in which the communication problem is a solved problem and the communication problem yes is an extreme case of uh, the witsenhausen problem but the spirit in which it is we can say it is a solved problem is 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 if we take this if we take if we if we have to accept that if we is the spirit in which we can say it is a solved problem is the large block length limit. It is when the it is when you give yourself enough samples to uh, to to accumulate look at um, figure out the patterns within those samples and then use those to communicate. This is this is essentially what is the uh, uh, the secret sauce essentially of communication, and that is the the bedrock on which communication theory rests. Now let's come back and think a little bit about how we were uh, we come back and think about uh, the control problem once again. The control problem would, if one wants to use this sort of paradigm within control, effectively what it would mean is that we have to wait for a large number of samples or we would have to the samples that we would be getting would be some kind of discretization of, a, of an earlier sample and then they would not have the kind of distributions that, that are being assumed in information theory. So when you have these kind of large number of uh, when you have to wait for a large number of samples what it precludes is the possibility of doing you know any kind of automatic decision making. So therefore, there is this kind of tension here between what is conventionally uh, being uh, pursued under in the communication setting and what is actually required in the control setting. That does not mean that I am not trying to say that this is not being solved. Some of these uh, some there have been some very nice attempts at this, uh, some very nice theories have been developed. But broadly speaking, we still do not have full clarity about the role of information in a in a typical control setting. We do not really know what the what kind of uh, uh, notions of information should actually be arising in a control setting. So the when so another uh, another important thing to note here is the, the the is the way entropy appeared into our calculations. Entropy made an appearance in our calculation because we were looking for a set with a certain with a certain set of characteristics. We were looking for a set which high probability but with small cardinality. 
and that came about through the asymptotic equipartition property. And the, the, the asymptotic equipartition property then gave us the entropy, entro, the entropy function. If one is looking for another objective, you know not, not this particular objective which is the one that is mentioned in the, in the data compression goal, it is quite possible that one would look, one would end up with another set of, a, with a, 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 different, uh, a different set of sequences or a different property, underlying property and therefore, and then come up with a different quantity altogether which does not complete, which is, which is, would be the appropriate notion or the appropriate measure of, of information in, in, in a control problem. So, this all of these issues basically are point, all of these things that I am mentioning essentially point us to the question of what is the role of information in control. Stochastic control is essentially about passing information from one step time step to the other. The simplest case is one where the information is passed free of cost. We already we always have the information nested and it is available for us to use in the future. But, but anything, anything practical or more general would involve some amount of loss of information and the right notions of what information is to be, is to be used, what information is to be, uh, to be retained, what exactly are we signaling and so on, all of these notions remain, uh, remain poorly understood. Some specific things have been studied such as there is a notion of any time capacity where, where one knows uh, the what kind of channel resources are needed for stabilization of, of, uh, of, of a plant and so on, these kind of things are known, but, but a lot more is unknown than what is known. So, this is, uh, so I invite you to be a part of this, uh, this, this fascinating journey, we are, we are really setting up, uh, uh, setting up today a, uh, the theory for the future of, of stochastic, uh, of stochastic systems of which very, very little seems to be understood despite their prevalence in all, all around us. So, I hope this course has, has, shed, has, has shed some light on, uh, on, on some of these issues. I hope you have also taken, taken back the view that I started the course with where, where I said that communication control uh, problems in a organization structure and economics are all actually uh, uh, brethren of each other in some sense. And, and but but they are not exactly the same and that is why uh, the difficulty lies in 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 merging uh, merging their ideas and working on the interfaces which will then lead to new the the uh, you know new insights and new developments into the field so i i look forward uh, to your participation in this course i look if you have any if you would like to uh, talk to me about anything my my information is there on the web you can feel free to get back uh, to get in touch with me. Thank you everybody for, uh, for your attention in this course and I, uh, and, I, and I wish you all the best in your studies.